helping kids who hate math learn it. The 2019 Teacher's Guide to Technology is here from my friend, Jennifer Gonzalez. Go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash guide and stay tuned for more. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. How can we help kids love math who just hate it? Today, we have Dr. Dan Meyer with us, and we're going to talk about how we can help those kids who really hate math love it. So how do we start, Dan? Yeah, well, we, uh, we make these huge promises to students about math's power in the world, but then we give them these flat problems on paper that only ask for, you know, you to remember some formula and make a calculation, which lacks the vibrancy of the world and reflects none of the work that people who love math actually do. So my project, Three Act Math, uh, you know, invites students using, using modern technology and multimedia to do the work of people who love math. Um, and it brings the world into the classroom in all of its, uh, you know, full color glory. So we will link to a previous episode, Felicia Casto and her amazing elementary math classroom, who just raved and raved about the transformative power of three act math lessons. So take us through what are three act math lessons? Yeah, well, the thing is, if you taught for a, a, any amount of time at all, you're so used to the, the structure and format of word problems. It seems like the way the world actually works. There's no other way. But then um, what I've been doing ever since I got a projector in my classroom, you know, years ago was to bring in multimedia pictures and videos and use those uh, with no information attached, no numbers, no question even. And then to slowly build up the problem with students. My conviction is that the, the, the best, most interesting Math problems aren't assigned on paper, but co-constructed with teachers and students in conversation. So, for instance, I got a, a video of this water tank. It's shaped like a hexagonal prism, a geometric shape, and it's filling up kind of slowly. And there's no numbers on the screen yet. There's no question. And I just ask students, like, what are you wondering? And we talk about our questions for a second. Then I offer them uh, in, in, you know, what my question is, like, how long will it take to fill up? I ask them for their estimates. A lot of math problems or very few math problems in textbooks ask students to just just guess. I even even ask students for wrong answers, which is unheard of in textbook math. Like what's a, an amount of time, you know, is way too long or too short. It definitely won't have filled up by that time. And then I ask them like, what info seems necessary here? All these questions that like that people who do math out in the world, um, they, they ask themselves these questions, but they're almost entirely absent from textbook mathematics. That's the, the interesting work of three act math. And those three acts are like act one is setting the stage. Like in a story, you're setting the stage and the context and act, act two is when the hero encounters obstacles and conflicts in our case, picking up these tools, these mathematical tools to learn how to solve the problem. And then act three, here's the kicker is that we show the answer, not in the back of the book, but actually show in fast motion, this water tank filling up. So students see like how close they got. And if you've never heard a student, uh, a group of students applauding at the end of a math problem, just come into a, a three act math class and the sense of suspense as the tank is filling up and am I correct? It's uh, it's palpable and really fun. Felicia talked about in her classroom and it sounds like you've seen kids change their opinion. I know my husband, he wasn't crazy about math, but he's an engineer now and he fell in love with math when he had to solve real world problems as he was building houses. Um, he was like, cool, you know, I can figure out, you know, how I'm going to construct this house. So what have you seen with the kids who hate math with this approach? Yeah, so with, with this approach, what's nice is that students, uh, I mean, there's loads of reasons why students dislike math, but one, one reason is they don't, they don't see its actual power in the world around them. They do all this work and they get an answer and the answer is like either the, what's in the back of the book or it's not. And that's, that's the sum total of the resolution with your husband, you know, his use of math, like it actually paid off in this sense of accomplishment and power. That's the same thing that we're, that uh, same approach I'm going for with this uh, act three and these problems is showing uh, the result of your math in the world. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is that students oftentimes if they struggle with math, they just, they, they feel such low status 
works. And it's like in a classroom, they are the stupid ones. They feel that way. What's nice about just showing a water tank and asking for questions is that, uh, the advanced students who are moving fast, uh, don't have an edge here. Anyone can have a question. And for the estimates, anyone can estimate correctly. It may be the case that students who are struggling with computation actually are, are better equipped to estimate answers than these students who are uh, little robot calculators. And so it, it levels the playing field in a, in a, in a really nice way for students who have historically hated math. So what do you think the biggest mistake teachers make with students who hate math? Um, you know, like uh, one thing I see a lot of is that if students struggle with computation, with remembering formulas and using them, is that students uh, that teachers will just offer more and more examples or more and more practice of the very same. Um, when really what we need to do is uh, question how we're defining math, why math is defined so narrowly as being quick at memorized calculations, and uh, you know why math doesn't reflect the work that your husband and other mathematicians do, like asking questions, asking for estimates, asking for wrong answers, thinking about info that's necessary. You know, discussion and debate. These are all uh, verbs uh, and work that people do who love math and is oftentimes absent from our classes. So, Dan, when you have a teacher who they've been using the worksheets, they've been using the textbook and the test, same tests that they've had for the last 10 years, let's say. Right. How can they start moving into three act math? They're nervous. They know they already get results doing it the quote old fashioned way. But they also know they have some students they're not reaching. How, yeah, how can I, they start? Right. I totally buy it. Um, it's, it's a big shift. It really is uh, to a different kind of pedagogy. Um, and so what, what I recommend people do is to start, start with just estimation itself. It's a very, it's very easy. They're very easy questions to ask. They're uh, really interesting to students. Um, and it requires very little investment of time, which is, of course, the most precious uh, commodity in a classroom. So there's a website, um, that I like a lot called estimation 180.com. Um, and it's just where a teacher named Andrew Sedell, who's now uh, a coach, um, has just gathered a bunch of imagery that provokes estimation questions. How many, how long, how high, those kinds of questions. And just take, here's a I recommend is to take five days, like your next five days this week, this coming week. And every day, just ask your students for five minutes at the start of class to look at an image, ask them for a number they know is too high, too low, and just right. And, you know, encourage them over time to be more brave with their too high and too low answers, their wrong answers, and then just show them the answer, the end. And uh, you do that and you get used to like how interesting it is for students. And I, I promise you that the, the next day when you don't do this estimation task, they're going to ask you like, why, like that was different, interesting and fun. Why are we not doing that and let that be your, your route into other kinds of mathematical work, like asking for questions and um, three act math. So, Dan, would you give teacher math teachers a pep talk? You know, they're right in the middle of standardized testing. It's the end of the year. It's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, look, I mean, this is a definitely exhausting time of the year. But the good news is that after, you know, standardized testing is done, you're basically in your like your, your lab time, your try something new out time and see if it works time. Um, so I just encourage folks like let that be the time where you, you know, don't just kind of sag into summer, but try something new and interesting out and see how students react to it. Let that set you up for some resolutions for uh, for the fall or the new school year. Uh, so, for instance, uh, estimation 180 or three act math. Uh, all of those can be interesting things to just try out and experiment with. Teachers, I will give you the link to the Google spreadsheet that has so many amazing three act math problems. Uh, Dan is a wealth of resources for math teachers. And, you know, math should be exciting and we don't want our students to hate math. You know, it breaks my heart when we see kids, when I see kids who just don't like math or think they're dumb because math is really something that we all need. I mean, we all need to balance our checkbook. So get out there and really go after those kids who don't like math and let's try to turn them around. Jennifer Gonzalez has released her 2019 Teacher's Guide to Technology with over 200 education technology tools, including tools for assessment, flip learning, presentations, parent engagement, video engagement, and more. In this guide, you get a simple description, a screenshot of the tool, and a play button that takes you to a video about how the tool works. Learn more at coolcatteacher.com forward slash guide. Now, I am an affiliate for this product, which means I am paid a small percentage of the fee if you purchase it. This is at no additional cost to you. And I only recommend the best products for educators on the 10-Minute Teacher. So, the 2019 Teacher's Guide to Technology. Hope you enjoy.
Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.